Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead here at Fishbowl Solutions and thanks for joining us on today's webinar as we give you a little recap of what we learned at Oracle Open World 2019. I'm happy to be joined by my colleagues Jerry Aber and Tim Grugel, Tim Grudel for this webinar and they'll be joining me in just a few minutes here. Here's the agenda for today's meeting. So we're going to start off by giving you a little bit of an overview on Fishbowl. Most of you know who Fishbowl is and what we do and why we're different. Um, hopefully most of you have learned over the last couple years that although Web Center remains our focus, we're starting to diversify a little bit with other technologies within the Oracle stack. So we'll cover off in some of those other areas that we're building solutions around. Most importantly, I think in sending out the invite and realizing that most of the people we're still talking to are using Oracle Web Center. There are Oracle Web Center contacts. The majority of what we're going to present to you today is, is what we learned at Web Center in regards to Web Center. So what, what the roadmap is for Web Center, other ways that you could use Web Center and the content stored in your repository, um, as well as ways that you can integrate Web Center with other Oracle applications, in, including Oracle Content and Experience and the Oracle Digital Assistant. At the very end, we'll summarize and then I'll leave you with the other webinar that we're doing next Thursday as, as part of this series, which we're going to talk about our Office Online Server Connector, which allows you to edit and collaborate and share by, or Web Center content information or, or content stored in Oracle Web Center using Microsoft Office. So directly in Web Center, you'll be able to now edit and update your, your Office documents um, and share those out right from Web Center. So again, most of you know who Fishbowl is and what we do. Overall, our goal is to help customers solve their most costly and frustrating non-sharing problems, and we've been doing that since 1999. So our, as I mentioned, our, our core focus is really Web Center, but as we've diversified now a little bit and, and um, added, added other Oracle technologies to our, um, to our kind of our, um, our plays here, um, we really are concerned with helping you leverage the content that you have in your organization and, and ways that you can distribute that out and, and, uh, and uh, build other applications that, that leverage that back-end content. That includes Oracle Content and Experience, as, as I mentioned, as well as mobile apps and digital assistance. And we'll be giving you a few examples of that today, of other organizations that have really taken the content that they've, they've had stored in Oracle Web Center, and they've leveraged other channels to distribute that content out, including through mobile apps and digital assistants or chatbots. But there's also the enterprise search solutions that we have um, available, both on-premise with MindBreeze and in the cloud. So as you consider your search strategy with Web Center and across all your enterprise content, we have solutions for that as well. So just a level set on expectations. So again, we're really, we understand that most of you cannot attend Oracle Open World. We want to make sure that as we go, we're bringing back information that can be of value to you. So as I mentioned, a lot of that's going to, for today's webinar, is going to be around what we learned from Web Center, but the other technologies that uh, we have services and solutions on, um, built around as well. Um, so you should know, as, a, as it says here, the Web, Web Center roadmap is continuing. So Jerry, who's going to be kicking things off here, will we'll kind of cover off the roadmap and and the support, uh, the, the, the support that's going to be available and extended to, to Web Center customers. So we want to make sure everyone understands that. As I mentioned as well, we always want to give you ideas and kind of show you the art of the possible for other ways to leverage your content. I mean, one of the values of having a, an enterprise repository like Web Center is the value of the content and sharing that out through various channels. So whether that's a mobile app, whether that's a, a, using it to retrieve information, um, to surface to a digital assistant or other integrations with back office system, your content can be repurposed and you can see more value from the content you're creating by, by distributing it out through those other channels. And then lastly, we'll do a little preview as uh, the president of the company, Tim Grudel, will uh, give you a little preview of our, our newest solution, a Web Center Value Add solution called Office Online Server Connector, and we'll kind of preview what we're going to cover in next week's webinar uh, with that solution. So quickly on the themes from Open World, uh, we learned a lot. Obviously, these aren't all going to apply to you, but we just wanted to mention these are kind of in line with like the big picture Oracle and kind of what you need to know. So you probably hear a lot about Oracle's autonomous database. Um, 
I guess the takeaway from this was that they now offer a dedicated employment option for the autonomous database. This provides customers with the highest level, level of security, reliability, and operational control. On the autonomous Linux side, uh, I, the takeaway there is that it really automates patching and upgrades even while, while the system is running. So for those of you that are running on Linux, you have, you have some more options there. On the VMware Cloud Foundation, the takeaway really there was the availability of that solution that enables customers to migrate on-premise VMware environments to Oracle's Generation 2 Cloud. So if you're using VMware now, you have some options to now migrate onto the Oracle Cloud Foundation. I bolded the Enterprise Grade Digital Assistant Bot because we're actually going to be covering uh, that topic in today's webinar. We've uh, Oracle is heavily invested in this area, and, and Fishbowl is, has been invested in as well for the last two years. We've built out, um, you know, kind of uh, solutions that are specific for customer service and human resources. And Tim will show you in a little little example of that today. Another big announcement was Oracle's free tier for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. For, so for I guess for for everyone on the line today, just know that um, you have a there's an availability of a new free tier that offers a set of free services to users. So if you kind of want to take a look at that and see what that's all about, Oracle does offer that now. And so um, that includes Oracle OCI, so that and they're always free Oracle Autonomous Database. So if you're kind of looking to see what that's all about and kind of get your feet wet. They offer that now um, as a free as a free tier within the Oracle Cloud. So, as a preview to kind of what we're going to share, as I mentioned, majority of this is going to be on Oracle Web Center and its roadmap. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry Aber. Thanks, Jason. Um, what I'd like to do is take you through um, initially the uh, Web Center support um, conversation. I want to make sure everybody's aware of where you, Oracle stands with respect to 11G Web Center and 12G Web or 12C Web Center. Uh, for those of you that are pre um, Web Center 11G, you might want to give us a call because we could surely help you with that upgrade um, all the way through 12C and with the situations where you might be taking Web Center to the cloud. So things to be aware of on the 11G side: our Premier support ended for car, portal and content on 2018, and extended support ends January 2021. So you want to be thinking about those plans with respect to getting to 12C or if you are on 11G at the current time. The 12C version is uh, in Premier support ends August 2022 and extended support ends August 2025. So you can see based on those, those timings and how far out Oracle still is um, supporting Web Center and making adjustments to that to improve that platform. Before we talk about some of the uh, uh, roadmap items. Um, we are, want to make sure we share the uh, Oracle Safe Harbor information. Everybody's probably seen that um, multiple times and knows it by heart. But when it comes to the Web Center platform and the roadmap and the things that they're focusing on, the three main elements are uh, content, sites, and portal. Most we'll focus on today is content and portal. Um, Fishbowl doesn't spend much time on the Web Center sites portions of this as we are focused on the OCE content experience cloud portion of the platform. But content is focused on uh, so, um, elastic search support, object storage, um, moving to um, container management like Docker and Kubernetes, and Office 365 support and extending the REST API support um, like most um, FAST and SaaS offerings should have. Web Center Portal is also focused on bringing that search experience together with Web Center content in the portal, moving it to the Docker images for Web Center Portal Cloud Service and make it easier to maintain and eventually getting that to Oracle Manage. And then leveraging Oracle Content Experience Cloud within the portal and managing the less uh, patch efforts and impacts and downtime associated with Web Center Portal Cloud Service. Let's talk about Web Center Content first. The latest uh, release is 12.2.1.4. And most of the focus on there has been, from a Web Center Content perspective, has been around content with stability and object storage. So the um, Web Center Content has been a very um, stable platform over the years, but there have been some reforms and improvements made, and tying in also the uh, enterprise or the Elastic Search capability into that. Uh, the OCI Cloud Storage is about extending that hybrid storage model and leveraging object storage, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, enterprise Capture has been all around productivity and the customer experience with respect to using that UI. 
um, allowing you to move between pages with a hotkey, threshold, um, base blank pages removal, uh, viewing page numbers, and simple basic uh, updates to the UI to help you uh, manage through that process better. Imaging and forms recognition um, been vastly improved in terms of the AP projects. For those of you really full, doing full AP automation, the AP project has been improved um, with OS updates, verifier improvements, and the document filter capability as well. So some other areas were also minorly spruced up that you can see in the release notes. Imaging has been added to uh, a minor update there in terms of printing multiple documents from the search results for those of you that use the imaging instance. I do want to talk about a use case uh, that makes sense for Web Center content, and this one actually um, straddles the on-premise and cloud type of topic. Um, we worked on a project here a little while over a year ago for transforming the parent and guardian communications through a one-stop shop mobile app. And this experience is all about using um, Web Center as a content repository for the mobile hub integration. And Web Center content was actually deployed onto an IaaS platform. Customers of a very large school district, and the two primary use cases for using Web Center in this instance were around the attendance data and the event data, and still being allowed to maintain event data outside of the events being pulled from another system. So we want to do a combination of manual and automated integrations there. The uh, Web Center content uh, system in this case was used for managing metadata only information that came from the source system as well, uh, two source systems as well as the manual updates, and then integrates directly into the mobile hub for the mobile app. That experience um, yields a, a, a platform such as this, which is a combination of Oracle Web Center on the IaaS platform, the mobile cloud service, and identity tenancies within the cloud space, and integrated with the data center on premise through a services connection and grabbing their attendance data and event data. So it was a nice, a nice, easy solve with respect to serving the data up through Oracle Web Center content, and they can extend that platform and use, re, use those repeated patterns to push more information to Web Center content without necessarily changing how Web Center works or the integration model works. When we look ahead, uh, to some of the Web Center content roadmap items. A lot of it's going to be around cloud readiness. Object storage support um, is, is going to be enhanced. Currently, the file system and database are the only ones supported. For those of you who might be familiar with what's called object storage, it's an architecture that maintains data as objects as opposed to the other storage architectures like file systems, which stores them, manages data in a file hierarchy, or block storage, which manages data as blocks within sectors or tracks. One of the primary uses of object storage um, can be around unstructured information, and object storage is used for purposes of storing like photos, like you on Facebook or Spotify songs, or online collaboration services such as Dropbox. Uh, one of the use cases around this might be if you want to push content through this um, scenario and store your content in the object storage area, you make it available for cloud API integration on the mobile hub, Oracle Integration Cloud Service, and Oracle Content Experience Cloud in terms of any um, apps you might be building in the cloud and want to support that information. Hybrid content um, is collaboration is being enhanced as well through the Oracle Content Experience Cloud. So one of the main models of integrating between on-premise Web Center content and Oracle Content Experience Cloud is through this hybrid connector, which allows you to push the content from Web Center content into OCE. So you don't have to go through any special migration activities to move that there. The content is, um, is all around that internal to external content sharing and taking advantage of the OCE capabilities in terms of viewing and security features without having to expose your Web Center content instance to the outside. Another roadmap item is, is around better manageability. A lot of companies are going to more of a container and Kubernetes-based um, infrastructure and deployment model. And Oracle is also following suit and applying that to the Web Center stack so that you can manage your cloud deployments using containers and Kubernetes orchestration. A Docker container, Docker containers under the covers from an Oracle perspective, is a platform and tool for building and distributing, running Docker containers, and Kubernetes is actually the container orchestration system for Docker and is meant to coordinate clusters of nodes 
and scale up the production in a highly efficient manner. So this is a very popular um, pattern these days, and Oracle is adopting that pattern for Web Center. For so those of you who have done installations of Web Center content, um, fairly basic and, and can be self-contained. Web Center Portal can be a little different, but the um, a little more complicated, but allows for that seamless and automated self-scaling and deploying that model into the infrastructure. What we are setting up, what Oracle is setting up for is one last upgrade, if you will. So getting the Web Center stack into a one last upgrade mode, but then actually transitioning to a new model where an individual node can be upgraded without bringing down, without bringing any or all nodes down. So you end up with a zero downtime upgrade scenario and all future upgrades will be in place upgrades via patching. That will help um, get things rolled out very quickly and manage your downtime in terms of your infrastructure, impact, your customer impact for those that use Web Center. From a future investment perspective, Oracle is also investing in the Office 365 support, um, which is mostly around the desktop integration suite product for those of you used to that. We're also enhancing the REST API support and getting that aligned more along the way that normal patterns are with respect to integration between systems and, and enhancing the REST API support. And you'll also see user interface improvements, and you'll probably see a rebranding taking effect. As you can tell by some of the screens, Oracle went through a huge rebranding as of the open world release this year. We're also doing continuous improvements via quarterly bundle patches and allowing more integration with Oracle Cloud products. So we can make, make the hybrid on-prem to cloud work cleaner and easier and make cloud to cloud work even seamlessly. Uh, lastly, um, one of the, uh, the um, topics that Oracle is focused on from a web center perspective on the content and portal side is Elastic search support. For those of you that have gone through and had some maybe problematic issues with um, database um, search in the past and moved away from Verity a long time ago, um, Elastic search is what's under the covers with respect to the content server side and the web center portal side to make the experience uh, work better in terms of improved multi-thread indexers, highly available cluster deployments, and REST API support in case you want to extend that experience within your portal or content uh, platforms. Those um, capabilities um, are going to be baked into the product. When Oracle, um, as Oracle's rolling that out, Fishbowl also provides enterprise search solutions around Google Cloud Search and MindBreeze on-premise search. So we basically take that search um, that Oracle's providing within Web Center content and Web Center portal and go beyond that to provide more focus on insights and less focus on tuning and getting into access of information across all of your business systems to provide a singular enterprise search model. Uh, the Google Cloud Search is focused on cloud only, and the MindBreeze uh, Inspire platform is an on-premise only solution. Oracle is also, um, um, they're, they've been doing a really good job in terms of updating how they manage their um, information through their um, sites, and they actually rebranded all their documentation. So we wanted to share that what's new in content for 12C can be found at this URL here. You can search it through Google very easily as well. But uh, I will say that over the last year, I've seen the documentation improve from Oracle, considering how they've done it in the past. Um, let's talk a little bit about portal now. Um, on the road ahead, let's talk about the 12.2.1 release first. Um, portal is also, like I mentioned, extending that search capability with feature improvements around adding, um, adding custom facets and saved facet search and searching outside of the portal and indexing improvements. And then also improving the document viewer so the content viewer with annotation can be done. And then the big one is around Dockers or Kubernetes and changing that platform whether it's on-prem or within Web Center Portal Cloud Service as they manage, um, move, start moving customer managed to Oracle managed on a Web Center Portal Cloud Service perspective. The productivity focus that you're going to see um, from those types of changes is around the Kubernetes container-based uh, deployments for Web Center Portal Cloud. Um, those of you who might be um, looking into Web Center Portal Cloud right now, it is a currently a customer managed 
environment, and this will enable that change to switch over to being Oracle managed and allow you to kind of push a few buttons to deploy your pods in order to scale that environment out. That will also enable zero downtime patching so that you do not have to uh, take your system down to apply any patches, and that will include, those, those changes also include the, the Elasticsearch being unified between the portal and the content repository. One of the more interesting pieces that are coming out as well, as, as it's moving into the cloud and Web Center Portal Cloud Service is deployed in a PLAS platform, that using Oracle integration or through the um, Content Experience Cloud area will allow you to use that as the storage uh, mechanism as opposed to Web Center Portal, or excuse me, as opposed to Web Center Content. So it allows you some flexibility there if you are going to be a Content Experience Cloud customer as well. And lastly, um, they're making sure that everything is supported in the latest browsers and third-party dependencies for the product platform. Uh, for those of you who might um, want to view, want to do a little logical kind of architecture here in terms of the Web Center stack, um, here you see that each pod, pod is a term that's um, in the uh, Docker and Kubernetes arena with respect to what is deployed on a managed server, and it's considered a pod. The Web Center Portal, Web Center Content, the IVR, and Elasticsearch are all deployed to an individual pod, which are managed by the Web, Web Logic and Kubernetes clusters and orchestrated to that OCI Kubernetes UI. This allows you to bring down, scale up very quickly and rapidly, all having to do fully, completely, and in, in engaging installs in order to scale up your environment. What's new in Web Server Portal? The, um, the documentation also is listed here in terms of URL and getting that, all the things that have been laid out in terms of the latest and greatest with Web Center Portal, 12.2.1.4. Uh, and I want to take you over to one more kind of um, content based solution that is called Oracle Content Experience Cloud. For those of you that might be new to this concept, the, um, this has been around for a couple years now and is kind of enhanced quite a bit, and there's a lot of improvement being made in this platform. The, uh, this is a pass offering, for those of you that might be unaware of this, that's um, available to similar contexts of managing content under what's called a headless content model. It has a number of features in terms of conversational, social, mobile, um, marketing use cases, and sales and service use cases, and this has allowed the syndication of assets across your organization for images and videos and structured content as well. You can build native sites, so there's ways to build um, sites and microsites using a similar uh, model that you might feel that may be experienced with with Site Studio or even Web Center Sites. A lot of big changes are being made in that arena around digital asset management and authoring, headless and site experience, and governance and compliance capabilities to continue to invest in that platform. Now, as you're, as you're a Web Center content customer, you might be looking to extend and evolve the assets that are stored in the Web Center content repository on-prem. You might have custom business processes, um, search around that, advanced conversations and co-loading and deployments on your on-premise solutions. You might have multiple apps kind of pulling content and contributing content into Web Center. For those scenarios, you might want to push information to Content Experience Cloud. This allows you to, through the connector, push that out there with any, out any additional um, development and push files out for collaborative file sharing, digital asset management, maybe um, software as a service attachments, and potentially DR and backup automation as well. So you can leverage that platform for a number of different use cases. When you're talking about that content alignment, this provides that mechanism for shadowing content and documents into OCE or vice versa. So if you have a use case where you co I'm collaborating something internally with Web Center content and push that out to share with parties <clears throat> outside of your, your four walls, you can use the security features and the sharing features in Oracle Content Experience, maybe allow them to make some changes and it pushes back to Web Center content. Site Studio is also an interesting alternative with OCE sites. You can use Site Studio assets and push them to the Content Experience Cloud and let the Content Experience Cloud site design consume those assets in that experience and publish that model through that experience. 
that Web Center Content OC um, connection is going to be interoperable with a tight, seamless hybrid document management and allows for mass migrating Web Center Content documents to OC to help cut down on any core development you might, you might want to make that happen. So there's use cases for both scenarios existing and allows you to connect on-premise and cloud solutions together. There is a, an interesting use case that's been bubbling up from a fishbowl perspective. Um, we've had fairly regular conversations about using Oracle Content Experience Cloud as a, a kind of a lightweight portal experience. Um, as customers are asking or new customers are being introduced to the cloud, they still want to be able to manage their content, they still want to manage sites, they still have security needs. Um, they might not have the same portal-esque type experiences or requirements that, that the on-premise portal provides, and they don't want to necessarily roll out a very complex Web Center portal cloud service type of solution. So from a lightweight perspective, um, we've been designing and working through some of our migration options to take customers into OCE as a portal-esque type solution. And we work with Oracle Product Manager to talk about some of these features in terms of building extensions around OCE, uh, providing simple nurturing tools to kind of build portals and leveraging the features that are already there. Um, for those of you who might be familiar but um, with other cloud products, you can put, put together Visual Builder Cloud Service with Oracle Integration Cloud Process and maybe DevCS to provide you a complete platform to run the portal and continue to extend that portal experience in a totally managed Oracle environment on the PaaS platforms. And there's some features that we have been recommending to Oracle product management in terms of resource and extending the environment to give you those poor less type features and um, hopefully providing some out-of-the-box components to make Web Center Portal include kind of React-based apps on a single page. So lots of uh, cool and interesting stuff going on in terms of how to align and make the, the, plas the past platforms work together to provide that type of experience. So with that, what I'd like to do is transition over to Tim Grudel, our president. Tim? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, Gartner, for example, has said by, by the end of 2020, 80% of organizations will be inter interacting or have some interactions with digital assistants. So if you're not doing it yet, someone in your organization is or they will be in the next 12 months. So now is a great time for you to get on top of it, and Oracle is kind of leading the way. Essentially, at a high level, if you kind of start on the left side of, the, of this diagram, um, a digital assistant starts by some form of a channel that you're going to interact with. Um, you know, you can see uh, an Alexa or Google Home. A voice channel is one of the popular channels. You also have multiple other alternative channels that you can interact with, whether that be through a web channel, um, which you'll see in the screenshot, or whether it be through SMS or other very um, versioning um, interaction messaging layers like Slack or Microsoft Teams. So the first thing that you that the digital assistant enables is to, is to interact in the channel or the mode which, with which you're most familiar. It then interacts and communicates at the Oracle Digital Assistant or ODA platform to go ahead and do, you know, you'll see those um, hexagons kind of talking about some of the typical use cases, whether that's, you know, some of our common examples right now are in HR use cases where I want to find out things like what's my absence, how much um, time off do I have? What's my paycheck? Do I have a bereavement leave? You know, there's death in the family. Or um, alternatively, there's a number of um, digital assistants that, are, that Oracle is releasing from their SaaS applications for sales-related applications, ERP and order and shipping, supply chain management applications, um, or you can interact them with other enterprise third-party systems like we just um, kicked off a project with um, Zendesk for a customer, and we're working on one for um, Service Cloud and um, ServiceNow. So it's, it's really the, the latest platform to, again, enable um, your organization, either internal or external, to communicate through the messaging platform they want. Um, it's critical for organizations um, like, like one large um, um, hospitality organization or theme park down in Florida that was really looking to have their 12,000 seasonal employees get access to the latest information. And um, per the previous slide, some of that information is um, in their HR system. You know, in, in their case, they're using PeopleSoft. Um, some of it's in a scheduling system called Kronos. Um, some of it is in a content management system, whether that, you know, for a um, managing of all their policies or procedures. So what they wanted to do is to make it 
um, enabled through both a web channel and also SMS. And I'll just show the web channel today um, how you can go access information from your HR and other systems to go do that. And what I've done is I've um, enabled Typically, the, the, the common use case right now is, you know, and you probably are all seeing this, where you'll have some kind of a bubble show up on a web page. Um, typically, you know, the, the, the de facto standard right now is the little bubble on the bottom right. Once you click on that, um, this is Oracle's digital assistant platform with some information that um, Fishbowl has, has added on top of it. Um, as an HR digital assistant, there are certain things that I'm prompted that I can do. I can update my information, again, as a retail or, or a theme park to have a tremendous number of, um, again, part-time employees that need to update my address, my phone number, so I can get my paycheck. They also want to be able to view their paycheck. So what am I going to see for my paycheck um, or what's my schedule? Um, so those are very common examples. Again, in this case, I can just quickly go ahead and say, let me view my schedule. Um, we interact with their single sign-on system. So now I can go ahead and just pull information out of my single sign-on system, and that is, um, or, or through single sign-on, now I'm pulling that right out of Kronos, the back-end system, to, to tell me what my upcoming schedule is. Alternatively, as an employee, I can say, hey, I have a death in the family. What, am I, what, do, what do I do? In this case, the digital assistant goes ahead and processes that with the natural language processing and the artificial intelligence machine learning and says, okay, it looks like you're wondering about our bereavement policy. So it gives me a little bit of a, a quick text on what it is, and then it also provides me a link to that content right out of our web center content repository. So within that platform, you can quickly and easily integrate with other enterprise systems. Again, in this case, it makes your content accessible through a alternative experience, which is a chat experience. Um, and at this point, it can also finish out and close that transaction, or it can also, if you had another HR system like Zendesk or, again, Service Cloud, it could log that as an HR ticket and process that through. So thanks, Tim and Jerry. So like I said at the beginning, we learned a lot at Open World, so we weren't able to, with five people out there, able to bring back everything. We'd encourage you to go out and uh, to watch the presentations or to watch the keynotes that were given by Larry Ellison and others, as well as you know look for specific presentations that were given that again would relate to what we covered today on the Web Center side, Content Experience Cloud, and Digital Assistance and Chatbot. So I've provided some links there. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, you know I'm going to cover now um, a new product offering that we've released probably um, two months ago now. We've already got a couple customers on it. Um, it evolved out of a demand that a lot of our companies and, and our key customers had around making it easier for the users to edit office content um, without the, the, you know, the multi-step process of checking it out, saving it, editing it, and opening it up. So it's called Office Online Server for Web Center Content. Um, you know, as kind of mentioned, the big problem that a lot of companies have seen is that process of going ahead and taking a file, go, hitting the checkout, downloading it to your local download folder, editing it, um, checking it back in um, has been a problem. Um, additionally, when you're editing it and you've got it checked out, um, you know, the, the pace of business and the real-time collaboration needs, you weren't able to do that. So, um, a lot of companies wanted to be able to find a way to make it so that multiple people could be editing a document at the same time. And the last key couple values are some of the files that you're looking at um, within Web Center, like typically Excel and PowerPoint files. Um, when you check them in and you convert them, and, and the, common, the most common way to view them is through um, a PDF file, um, the conversions don't really work and you lose a lot of that fidelity that the native file has. So. Um, companies wanted to make that a lot easier and a lot richer. And so from that customer input and the voice of the customer, we built this solution. Um, kind of from a simplified view, and, I'll, and I will actually demo it, basically within the Web Center interface, we now are providing some context-specific buttons on the right that um, identify that, this pro that that content object is available to be edited in online server. Um, 
from within that, you then, and, and I will show this, you can quickly go ahead and just hit the button. You can either view it or with the right permissions, you can actually edit that file right within your browser window without having to go open the native file and, and go through this, what did you call it? Like nine steps I think Jason counted for the last time you edited a file. So um, again, as you go through, you're, you're now just online in your browser editing that file. So again, you can also edit it not only um, at your desktop, but now um, because it's all web enabled, you can edit it even in, on a tablet or another device. All right, as we look to conclude today's webinar then, just a quick summary. So I think the biggest thing that we wanted everyone to know, and obviously, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're, we're still focused on Web Center. This, this webinar was really intended to our Web Center customers to help them know that, that Web Center is still alive and it's doing well. There's more, um, there's a, uh, more plan for it on the roadmap. You know, they're looking at other capabilities and integrations and ways but also giving customers ways to extend the content that they have stored in Web Center with integrations like the Oracle Content Experience file that Jerry covered. Uh, but also giving you ideas and other ways to leverage your content through other channels, such as mobile applications and digital assistance. So as you consider those ways, um, you know, just know that you know, to having your content stored in a central repository like Web Center can definitely benefit you there. And we'll show how you can even um, as I mentioned with the Office Online Server Connector and Tim kind of previewed for you, you know, new ways that you can interact and, and leverage that content, but really make it easier to edit that content so you can continue to, to you have Web Center be that repository, have Web Center be that location where your, where your um, high value content is stored that you're looking to share out, and then have really that kind of that end, end user, business user that's more used to that kind of that Google Drive or, or Microsoft OneDrive experience that just makes it really easy to go to a to go to a repository system, make edits to content, and have that content, you know, be updated and edited, um, updated in the system where it can be found as like the final version. So again, I'd encourage you to join us for next week's webinar. For more information on any of the things that we covered today, you can go to, to our Fishbowl website to find a recording of this webinar. The recording will also be sent to every, everyone that registered within a couple of days. So please look for that. Um, check out our social media channels. We're also very, very active with our blog content, so check out our blog and our website as well.